What's up guys, Trevor Hunter here with Dirt Bike Test. Today we are, we are doing the 450 off-road shootout with the 2023 models. Uh, I've got the Kawasaki, the Honda, the Yamaha, and the Gas Gas on hand. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit about me. I'm 24, like 5'7", 160 pounds, um, off-road pro, kind of more of a desert Grand Prix, I guess. Um, not much of a moto guy, but I ride moto quite a bit. Uh, for practice and training and uh, my current or the bikes I'm more familiar with are the Yamaha YZ450FX and the Kawasaki KX450X. For uh, for my test I was able to uh, race all these bikes at the SRA Grand Prix. Uh, Rich and Kathy Suter they're great people uh, and they're nice enough to let me kind of ride all these bikes back to back to back throughout the race. Um, so kind of really what these bikes are intended for is they're cross-country off-road race bikes and so to be able to do one lap at race speed on a racetrack um, and kind of switch back to back to back like that, you really see what kind of you like and don't like really quick um, about all these different bikes. So it's pretty interesting and uh, yeah, some really positive takeaways from it. So kind of the rank first in my list would be the Kawasaki. Um, it just did everything so well. The motor, the motor is one of the better motors uh, as far as just it's very easy to ride, but still has plenty of power. Um, some of the other bikes can be faster, and some of the bikes are other bikes are easier to ride. But I feel like this is this Kawasaki motor with the aggressive coupler in it was like the best overall blend of being able to, to ride it fast and hard, but also being controllable and usable. Um, I could kind of kind of ride a gear tall, but mainly you kind of wanted to ride more the mid, the top end. Um, Especially for grand, kind of Grand Prix off-road racing, it's very uh, very usable. Uh, if I was in GNCC or even desert, uh, I think kind of lug, being able to lug the bike more might be a little more of an emphasis. But for kind of Grand Prix racing, what we did today, uh, the Kawasaki motor worked really well. And kind of moving on to the suspension, the suspension actually is it wasn't terrible. It wasn't the worst suspension, but I also don't think it was the best suspension either. It's kind of just average um, on the day. So definitely very soft for my liking. Um, I'm a you know, I'm a higher level rider, and I like tend to gravitate more towards a kind of moto stiffer setup. So that Kawasaki off-road suspension was a little too soft for me. Uh, it was more of a common thing with all these bikes, uh, but the Kawasaki was definitely one of the softer ones. And uh, so that's kind of one of the negatives I had with this bike, but kind of was more of a general consensus with all these bikes is just they're all too soft. Um, we kind of move on to the chassis. This is where I felt that Kawasaki really shined is kind of just the bump absorption and the overall just chassis feel with this Kawasaki is really what set it apart from the rest of this rest of the bikes. Um, has a really good mix of being stable at high speeds, but also being able to corner really well. And you could also corner kind of front end, you fr steer with your front end or steer with the rear end, kind of very neutral. Um, didn't really seem to prefer one or the other all that much. So being able to corner both ways was nice and just kind of how stable it was at the high speeds. Uh, for me, that's something really important to me. I'm not, like I guess I'm not really a moto guy, I'm more of a desert off-road guy. So I like more of a stability. Uh, I don't like the heavier feeling bike, and I think it's Kawasaki, even though I think it's like the second lightest on the scale, uh, it's probably the heaviest feeling bike out there for me, and uh, that's something I kind of gravitate towards when, uh, when I'm looking for bikes that I like to ride, uh, especially for off-road. Uh, the Kawasaki ergonomics are also kind of one of the better ones, just the seating position to the handlebars, to the foot pegs, everything works really well for me. Um, it's just very neutral and easy to get, get on and get, jump on and go fast. Uh, so it just felt very comfortable and uh, kind of at home with me. Moving to number two on the list would be the Yamaha. Um, obviously I've spent a lot of time in the Yamaha as well and I know exactly kind of what I need to do to f fix it and make it really really good but I could also say that about all the other bikes. Um, they're all so close and so good and a couple small changes could really set this set either of these bikes um, apart from the rest but uh, the Yamaha in particular I have a lot of time and experience with and uh, to me, the motor is one of the best. Um, very fast, pretty aggressive power, but being able to tune the power with the GYTR power app, it really kind of changes the bike and in the motor aspect and also in the handling aspect. Um, kind of when you play with mapping, for me especially on these 450s, uh, it changes more than just the motor. It really changes how the bike handles and reacts and just how you can ride the bike overall. 
So once we put the, uh, the JL Smooth Map or even the Magic Map in this Yamaha, uh, really kind of smooth out the power to where I could, I could ride taller gears or I could kind of ride it a little more aggressive. Uh, I tend to ride the spike in the taller gears because it responds to that well. Um, but just smooths out the power a little bit and gives me a lot of it so I can ride be smoother with the power and not have to ride it so aggressive like a 250F or even a 350. Uh, Yamaha suspension, really good in certain aspects. Uh, in small bumps, the bike works really well. But as the bumps get bigger and the bike kind of pitches back and forth more, uh, I think it's where it hurts. A lot of this is just a soft fork spring. Um, it's very unbalanced and uh, the soft fork spring makes the front end ride lower in the stroke. Uh, it feels really harsh and it just really holds this bike back uh, in like a Western Grand Prix condition. Like when the bumps are small, you're going through rocks or roots, it's good, but once you get like faster motocross track or high speed straightaways and whoops, um, the bike has just felt very unbalanced and kind of that's where it lacked and uh, kind of where the Kawasaki kind of jumped up is a little more balanced. And the Yamaha chassis, it's also really good. Um, it's actually it's the heaviest bike on the scale, but it feels much lighter on the track. It actually feels one of the lightest to me. And a lot of that's that the playful motor helps that and then it's kind of the the mass centralization the Yamaha has going on with the backwards motor and everything it just makes it feel much lighter than it is on paper so overall the chassis it's very one of the probably the most stable chassis out here which like I said before I really tend to prefer that um, so that chassis works well and a corner is good enough to where I might give up a little bit in the corners but I feel safer and more comfortable and confident at higher speeds which is what I'm looking for and kind of moving on third third and fourth are actually pretty close I could almost consider a tie um, more just depending on the day and the track, but I'll put the Honda 450RX in third. Um, overall, the motor, I really like the Honda motor as well. Um, got tons of power, tons of torque, you can ride it taller gears. Um, it's a little kind of like the Yamaha in that sense, where it's tons of power and you can ride the taller gears and be smooth on it. Whereas the Kawasaki and the Gas Gas were more, like to be ridden a little more aggressive. Uh, so I really gelled with the Honda motor. Uh, having the three power modes is good as well. I kind of tend to prefer the aggressive uh, power mode and I just ride that taller gear and lug it and use the torque of the aggressive mapping. Suspension on the Honda is probably the best suspension out there um, stock with all these bikes. It felt the most balanced and the stiffest at the same time. Whereas uh, like the Gas Gas or some of the other bikes maybe weren't quite as uh, quite as stiff and they also weren't as, as balanced as this Honda was. So overall I really like the Honda suspension and uh, that really brought it up in my rankings is just how how much harder I can charge into the bumps and feel safer and more confident on the Honda especially as the track got rougher. Um, the chassis feel, chassis isn't really my favorite. Uh, it's a little more rigid and precise feeling and I kind of that's not really what I tend to prefer. Um, corners really well but it lacks a little bit of stability and it lacks a little bit of comfort and especially when here on the west coast it gets really dry and hard pack and blue groove and that's like really really feel the honda chassis negatively um and riding all these bikes back to back is just how different the chassis felt and it's something i didn't really gel with right away i mean obviously as i spend more time on it or as the condition change i i tend to prefer it more but kind of today and uh in the more typical west coast off-road conditions I, uh, the Tonda chassis doesn't really gel with me all as much as the some of the other bikes. And kind of last on my list, even though it's still a great bike, and it's, like I said, it's really close to the Honda, I'll put the Gas Gas. Um, the Gas Gas motor, starting with the motor, very 350-like in power, and just in terms of where the, like the power band and where the power is. Uh, still got tons of torque down low, but the kind of the bottom end pulling power isn't all that there. and doesn't rev out super quick, but once you get into the mid, and especially into the top end, um, the bike makes a ton of power up top and it likes to be revved a lot, kind of like a 350 or 250F. Um, that's something I not really, don't really like to do on a 450 uh, especially. So it's kind of where I lose that gas gas power is I have to ride it more aggressive than I want to. And it kind of wears me out a little bit quicker. But overall it's very smooth linear power. It just makes more of the power up top than does down low like some of the other bikes. And suspension, the gas gas suspension actually felt very balanced, especially when we we put, I think, 150 PSI in the fork from 145, which is kind of stock recommended. So bump up the fork pressure helped a lot, 
but and it felt balanced but it also felt the softest out of all of the bikes and to me that was a big negative especially as trying to go fast um, it just made it quite not quite as safe and less confidence inspiring when it was uh when it was that soft overall the gas gas was very just kind of a vanilla did everything good nothing great um, nothing really stood out that i really gelled with all that much um, I have quite a bit of time on Austrian bikes, uh, especially in the desert and off-road racing. And yeah, I just felt, I felt like a gas gas or a KTM, which is nothing wrong with it. It just didn't, uh, didn't excite me all that much um, in any department. But overall, it was very comforting and easy to ride. And it's something, one of the bikes actually jumped on and felt just kind of comfortable sitting on it and with the ergonomics, everything right away, which uh, with that and the Kawasaki, I think were the two I felt most comfortable on just jumping on right away. But overall, all these bikes are really good. I mean, just a couple of minor changes to each of these bikes would set them apart from all the rest. Um, I feel very confident in that I could go racing. I raced them all already, but I could go racing them at a high level with very minimal um, kind of adjustments, just maybe some suspension work and a few things here or there on each bike that kind of to personalize them. And uh, overall, they're really good. So yeah, and that's a wrap. I'd say the Kawasaki kind of took the top honors with the Yamaha in close second. And then the Gas Gas and the Honda were a little bit of a tie for third and fourth. Um, but overall, these bikes are really good. So until then, we'll uh, see you out on the trail.